Hey y'all, Dawn here, and today we have a little bit of a different video for you. So instead of showing you the card from start to finish, I'm gonna give you an in-depth dive into the technique of creating this yummy, delicious, rustic goodness. So this is the um, Country Garden die set from Spellbinders designed by Annie Williams. I love this entire collection, and I will have it linked in the video description below. For the barrel and the wagon wheel that we're doing today, I'm using the Rustic Garden Set. Now this one comes with the barrel, the wagon wheel, the birdhouse, a water pump, and <clears throat> sorry, and the uh, boards and the posts there to make a fence. So I'm going to isolate just the pieces that we need first, and then I've got my watercolor cardstock over there. This is the Distress watercolor cardstock, but you could use any mixed media paper, any paper that is water friendly. And there's several methods that you could use to achieve this look. So for the first one, I'm going to show you the barrel body and we're going to create that using distress spray stains. I'm going to start with a little uh, speckled egg here and I'm going to spray that onto a craft mat. Then I'm going to take some salvage patina, but the salvage patina can quickly overpower that speckled egg. So I'm going to take off the top of the bottle there and I'm going to use the nozzle to just tap some color into that speckled egg. And then I'm going to do the same thing with some antique linen. Remember, we want this to be like dirty. Uh, it's been sitting outside for a while. It was pristinely painted that nice blue color, but now it's getting a little dirty. So we're going to add a little bit of dirt into there. And then we're going to spray that with our distress sprayer, a little bit of water. And we're just going to start dipping into that. Now we've watered this down quite a bit and that's because this is our base layer. We're going to manually add some grunge to this after we get our uh, die cut cut out. So I'm going to dip and dry, dip and dry. Remember you want to build layers of dirt, years of grime. So when you want to layer color, you remember wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. So by drying in between each of these little dips, we're gonna get a buildup of color with some distinct uh, variations between each layer. Now it was a little bit light. I wanted a little bit more punch from that salvaged patina. So I've added a little bit more of that and now I'm picking that up. And there are several different ways that you could do this. Again, if you don't have distress spray stains, you could use your ink pads and smush some color down, spritz it with water and then do the exact same thing. We needed just a little bit more dirt there. So I've added that in and then it's time to dry this completely and do our die cutting. You can pick which portion you want to cut your barrel from there. You know, we've got a little bit of extra room on there so I can kind of make one side darker, one side lighter. Just kind of choose your favorite spot. It's your barrel. All right, so we've got our base layer down and now it's time to start adding some detail. Right now it's still looking a little flat, so we need to add some shading. I'm just gonna take a blending brush here and I believe I am using, I'm using what's ever on it, but <laughs> I'm gonna pick up some frayed burlap and we're just gonna add a little shadow around the edges. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna give it that rounded look. The edges of the barrel are gonna be a little darker, the center is gonna be a little lighter, and that is going to make it look more three-dimensional like the center of the barrel is closer to us it's coming forward catching more light and now it's time to pull out that secret weapon this is the tool you did not know that you needed if you don't have one you need to run out and get one right away a simple sea sponge guys i've had this for at least 15 years this same one it used to be bigger as i've used it over the years um, and been lazy and not cleaned it uh, acrylic paint has dried on it and all I do is just rip off that area if that happens but you can wash this with some dish soap and water and it's good as new and I'm gonna zoom in here really close for you guys so you can see exactly what is going on here so the texture on this sea sponge is very um, very very variegated that's not right uh, the texture of the sea sponge <laughs> is what is going to create all of these very um, organic varied marks, right? So I'm gonna dip my sea sponge into my ink and then I'm going to tap it onto my die cut. Now you could swipe with the sea sponge, you can tap. As I'm tapping, I'm going to turn and twist the sea sponge 
so that I don't get the exact same pattern every time I'm applying the ink. I'm going to do this with several different colors so that I get this nice varied speckled pattern in all of the different colors. Guys, you cannot achieve this with anything other than a sea sponge. Now you can pick these up for super inexpensive at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, they are invaluable if you love this look. You can use these with your gilding paste, your texture paste, acrylic paint, um, ink like I'm doing here. A little later, we're gonna even use them with Versamark to apply some embossing glaze. So this is just one of those tools that if you love distressing, I highly recommend you add it to your arsenal. So here I'm able to add all of these very organic markings to this barrel very quickly and easily. All right, so that is the base layer of our barrel done, and now it's time to do the bands that go around the barrel. Now, these are typically metal. I want this to look really corroded and old. So I don't wanna start off with white. It's gonna require me uh, to do a lot more ink blending on a very delicate die cut. So I'm gonna start by just putting down a base layer of color. I'm gonna use the frayed burlap as my lightest color here. This will be my highlight. I'm gonna just indiscriminately cover the whole paper. It doesn't have to be blended well because we're going to die cut it from it and then we're gonna use that sponge to apply layers and layers of color. So don't worry about over blending this. If you wanted to do the wet technique where we dipped into the colors, you could do that as well. I just wanna show you guys a couple of different ways. All right, so here's our barrel. I'm leaving that top piece in place because we are gonna use that ultimately in the end design. Now I'm gonna take some frayed burlap in my blending brush. I'm just gonna darken up those edges. Take a little shortcut here. Remember when we're applying the ink with the sea sponge, it's going to apply a little bit at a time and on all different random pattern. Well, let's, let's speed that process up just a little bit by putting down our darker color around our edges in the bottom since we already know that they are going to be darker to give us that rounded appearance. Now we're gonna grab our sea sponge again and we're going to start just sponging on our color. Again, I'm doing that same, um, making sure I'm just doing a pouncing motion, applying it heavier around the edges so that the color builds up faster, and I'm turning and twisting that sponge as I, as I apply the ink so that I don't replicate the same pattern over and over. All right, so I've used tea dye, now I'm gonna use walnut stain. I'm just going to progressively get darker. Now, if you don't have several shades of brown or brownish reds or whatever, you can always smush the ink pads that you do have. Like say you have a brown and you have a red. Smush those onto your craft mat and then dip your sponge into that. Then you're gonna have a brownish red. Um, if you've only got one shade of brown and you don't have lighter and darker browns, you can put down your brown add some black, so smush down a brown and a black, and then pick up the brown and the black with your sponge. Mix it together and then tap it on. So don't feel like you need, you know, five or six shades of these browns. If you don't have them, use what you have. You can always color mix right on your craft mat. But you can see how beautifully this is building up in a very modeled way. It's not a super solid color. Again, you can see here, I'm just hitting those edges again to deepen those up, save me some time, because I know I want this to look like that old corroded metal. So I need those edges to be dark, and I could sit here and continue to apply with the sponge, but I know it'll build up faster if I just use that blending brush on the edges. Now we're gonna add that rust. For that, we're gonna use the Distress Oxide Rusty Hinge. Pick that up with that same sponge and then just tap that into a couple places here and there and look at how beautiful those rust spots look. Oh, it's so pretty. Again, we are going to continue to add even more texture to these. So don't feel like you have to get it perfect in the first pass. Finally, I'm gonna come in with some ground espresso 
And this is where I'm going to add that texture back into the edges. Remember, we went over it with that um, blending brush, which gave us a little more of a solid color by taking this deep, deep, almost black brown and tapping that on the edges. It's going to model up that um, color again. All right, and that's going to finish up the base layers for our two pieces for our barrels. So here they'll layer up just like this. Now off camera, I went ahead and created a couple more barrels. These time, this time I did them in brown. So you can see here I used all the same colors that I used for our metal banding here, but I used them on the base of the barrel. And you could use this banding on top of this barrel, but I prefer to add something with a little more contrast on the wooden barrels. So I opt for the darker uh, blackish metal on those. And I will show you how to achieve this because it's going to be the exact same color combos that we use for the outer rim of our wagon wheel. Speaking of the wagon wheel, I went ahead and created the spokes here off camera because we use the exact same technique that we just used for the band on the barrel. So I die cut the two pieces here for the center of the wagon wheel and used the exact same inking technique on both pieces that we just used on that band. Okay, so now we're gonna create that outer rim and the clamps that hold the wagon wheel together. Now I've got another piece of distressed cardstock here and this time I'm going to put down a base layer of black soot. I'm going really light here, I'm just adding this ink all over the background of this cardstock so that Again, I have less work to do when it comes to adding the color with the sea sponge. This way I get a good gray as my base layer, which will also be my highlight color. I'm not at all worried about getting a perfect blend here, so don't stress about this part. Again, alternatively, you could do the wet method where you put your ink down on the craft mat and then dunk your cardstock into it. Either way is going to work just fine. All right, so then once my color is down, I'm gonna add my dies. You're gonna nest the spokes of the wagon wheel there inside the large circle. I am I tape mine together because otherwise it is a given that they're gonna shift. So I used to use a little bit of washi tape to tape those in place. And then we're also gonna cut the clamps. We'll run that through our die cut machine and now we are ready to add all of the fun distressing. Okay, and I have thrown this one into fast motion because it's the exact same steps, just the color palette is a little different. So we started with that black soot applied very lightly, and now I'm adding some ground espresso here, which is my darkest brown, and then I'm gonna come in with the black soot over top of that. Now this is going to give me a darker, mostly black color because we do have that gray is our lightest color and it acts as the highlight. So here up close, you can see we've got more of a grayish black going with some brown highlights, quite different from the brown banding that we had there and definitely different than the spokes here you can see. Do the exact same thing to the clamps. I'm just laying those out on my mat using the ground espresso to add that texture there. And then I'm going to come in with the black soot over top of that and apply, apply my ink using that sea sponge. So you can see this is actually extremely easy, but it gives such gorgeous results. And again, I don't know any other way to replicate it without using the sea sponge. All right, so we've got one final step to add some texture here. You can see we've got some three-dimensional raised texture here that is catching the light. This is just another level of dimension that takes it up another notch. So this one's gonna be easy to apply as well. We're gonna use that sea sponge with some Versamark and we're gonna use an embossing glaze. So I'm using Walnut Stain and Rusty Hinge. They're gonna complement the colors that I used underneath, but you could use uh, Smoky, what is it, Smoky Shadow, or black soot or any darker embossing glaze. They are translucent, so they're gonna allow the color to shine through and mix with the embossing glaze color that you put on top. So I've got a little piece of sea sponge that I've ripped off and I use this one. This is my dedicated one for um, doing little detail areas like this with the Versamark. I've applied the Versamark using that sponge and then I just sprinkled the embossing glaze over top. Now, if it goes on a little thicker than you wanted, you can use your finger or brush to uh, knock some of it off. 
but if you are doing this in succession so if you're if you had just inked this and you had just applied your ink and it was still wet you could skip the Versamark step and just sprinkle your embossing glaze on top of that because it will stick to the wet ink now I'm just using my heat tool to melt that and then here you can see all of that grungy goodness that adds and it just adds that 3d texture now I'm going to go ahead and add another layer in the walnut stain to this as well because I wanted both uh, levels of texture but you could stop here again remember this is all up to you you can create it to your liking you can do more you can do less you can do different colors that is all completely up to you that is one of the things that I love so much about this type of crafting and creating no two will look alike even if they're made by the same person they're never going to end up the same so this to me is my happy spot I love my clean and simple don't get me wrong but this type of creative play really feeds my soul okay so let's put this wagon wheel together so you're gonna fit that outer rim around the spoke here and then these clamps are what's going to hold it into place so I'm going to apply some liquid adhesive to the back side of each of the clamps and then we're going to adhere that along the outer edge so the clamp itself will be adhered to the outer edge and that spoke area so I'm just using my tweezers to make sure that I'm lined up there I'll push it into place and then I will adhere the next one di directly across from the first one and then I'll do the same thing with the remaining clamps so we're gonna do them at the top the bottom the left and the right and then we'll push those into place and we have our wagon wheel look at how fun that is oh, it looks so good doesn't it I love this die and I like I said this type of creative play absolutely feeds my soul and you can create as many variations as you'd like. You can do them cleaner, you can do them more grungy. Really, there's still a lot of options, even using this more grunged, rustic look. So here is the finished card in which I used the barrel and the wagon wheel. Like I mentioned, I also used the um, garden builder to do all of those florals here. And I actually combined a ton of companies here. So I've got the Spellbinders, again using that country road collection for my gift card holder here I use some paper and the uh, seed packet die from honeybee stamps I thought that this would be perfect to hold a gift card to a nursery a plant nursery or even your local hardware store my sister would love to get this uh, the birdhouse there again comes from that rustic garden finished it in the same way as the barrel in the background here I've used W plus nine tossed florals die this is one of my favorite cover dies. I cut it into pieces and used it to accent. And then I added some vellum tucked up under there. And then for this texture in the background, this is a Honeybee Stamps 3D embossing wood grain folder. I will have everything linked in the video description below under the supplies. The sentiment is also from Honeybee Stamps. I always enjoy mixing and matching companies, you guys. It is the best way to use up your stash, right? You don't always have to have something new. You can combine something new with something old, and it brings it new life. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of this style video where we just focus on a technique, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to check the video description if there's anything that you're looking for. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.